Rebecca Barfield's A Christmas with a Twist. Old Victorian slang and their meanings, above board means reputable, airs and graces means hiding your true character, all overish means neither sick nor well, the premonitory symptoms of illness, balderdash means nonsense, bang up means very fine, bang up to the elephant means perfect, bird means woman, bricky means brave or fearless, butter upon bacon means extravagance, chuckaboo is a nickname for a close friend, Church bell means a very talkative woman. Copper means a policeman. Figson or Canuck means laxative. Flimflimmer means a liar. Glock or Glocky means half witted. Griddling means begging, peddling, or scrounging. Gully fluff means crumbs. Mad as hops means excitable. Monic means signature. Month of Sundays means an indefinite period of time. Nanty narking means great fun. Nipper or nippers means child or children, off your rock means to be crazy or mad. Pill in this jam means the point of a story or action. Pod snappery means willful decision to ignore the objectionable while at the same time assuming airs of superiority. Ruffles means handcuffs. Skillamling means secret, shady, doubtful. Sprat means sixpence. Toy and tackle means watch and chain. Yours truly means a reference to oneself. Synopsis. The gas lights that line the streets have been lit. The silver has been polished and the menu prepared for the Granger Manor's annual Christmas gala, a benefit to raise support from the upper crust of society to sustain the local orphanage. This however proves to be a challenge when the Cratchits discover things at the orphanage are not as they seem after meetings with the staff uncover a nefarious plot to take advantage of those less fortunate. Christmas at the manor seems bleak as the Cratchits risk shame and financial ruin until the Duchess has a stroke of genius and an unexpected guest reminds us of an astounding Christmas truth. They will! How can you be so sure? Because we have money. But even if we didn't, we have collateral. <clears throat> the endowment. Yes. The endowment will take care of things we need up front, like attorney fees, notary fees, recording fees with the clerk of records, basic supplies. I wish we could have purchased a new building for this venture. I hate the thought of leasing something. The bank assures me that this is a sound investment. <coughs> we will be assuming the management responsibilities of the orphanage in town from the previous owner. Now, will you please come sit down? Her lady, a tweet of all the saving and loan. <coughs> Oh, we were expecting Mr. Horton snore. Well, he was sent on his stead, and I'm trying to make him wait in the library. The library? What? Why would you do that? Well, Bill's captain, he could really use something. Oh. Well, any other day I would allow you to send him on a wild goose chase, but since we have orphanage matters to attend to, you'd better send him in. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> or oh, if I wasn't nervous before, I am now. Why? I'll explain later. Mr. Tweedledum of Savings and Loan. Tweedledum. Uh, thank you, James. Good help is so hard to find. Mr. Hortsnort was otherwise engaged, so I came to handle this transaction p -p 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 personally. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Tweedledum, good of you to come. Won't you please sit down? Thank you. May I offer you something to drink? Uh, honey? None for me. I believe she was talking to me. <laughs> Why would you call him honey? I didn't. Would you like honey in your tea? Sugar. <laughs> Did he just call you sugar? Of course not. <laughs> Will that be one or two? Four. I like my tea sweet and my women sweeter. <laughs> Incidentally, where is my betrothed? I had hoped to visit with her about our wedding p -p 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 plans. Since I'm already here, no sense in making an extra trip to the manor. This way I can kill two birds with one stone, oh. so to speak. Oh, well, I'm afraid one of those birds will have to survive. Catherine is tutoring the Harris children this week. Hmm. That's rather disappointing. But! I suppose I can forgive her in consideration this once. 
Something I'm certain will be rectified once we've said our I do's. What do you mean? Once we are married, there'll be no need for her to work outside of the home. Oh, does Catherine know that you feel this way? It is a common expectation. A woman's place is in the home. She'll be far too busy to concern herself with academia. Perhaps we should take care of our business. Yes, of course. I have taken the liberty of drawing up the necessary documents. It is a standard lease contract. You agree to lease the existing building for the amount we agreed upon at a 4% interest compounded any month for the payment is in arrears. And 4% is the standard rate? Of course. Were not for the endowment to supplement your expenses, the bank would have been forced to set the interest at six or even seven per, 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 per cent. And what about the current staff? I have spoken with Governor Crawley and Professor Redgrave, and they are willing to remain p -p -p posted under your management. It only makes sense to keep them on. You wouldn't want a change in leadership to disrupt the children's p -p -p progress. I believe you will find that the orphanage is a well-oiled machine that virtually runs itself. Oh, uh, and, and the children? Of course the children will need a p -p 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 place to stay. Unless you intend to cast them out to the streets with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Of course not. What a dreadful thing to say. Indeed. We only meant to inquire about their needs. What provisions have been made for them in the past? Pro provisions? Their house? Bed and clothes. We must provide them with an education until they reach 15. Then they must leave the orphanage to find work. Running an orphanage is a per 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 perpetual trade, you know? All I need are your initials. Here. 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 And your moniker there. And uh, what do I sign? Oh. You don't. There's no need to concern yourself with the business sides of things. Don't you trust your husband to handle these affairs? What? Well, of course I do. Tim is quite capable. But this is a joint venture. Yes, it is. Between the bank and Lord Pratchett. You are what we call a silent b -b 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 partner. <laughs> See? You're good at it already. <laughs> You're tea, Mr. Tweedlebaum. Oh, there's nothing like a hot cup of Earl Grey on a cold December day. Oh, I'm so glad you're looking forward to it. Lord Cratchit. Lady Cratchit, p -p 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 please tell Miss Catherine I stopped by. Good day. Nice see you out. <laughs> All right. What was that? <laughs> 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 Flim nor flam. 
But you said that she... I said that she would be tutoring the Harris children, which she will be for the next few days. I see. Very clever. <laughs> Good tea. No. no, I wouldn't drink that if I were you. No. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> that was Mr. Tweetlebombs. It's amazing what a shaker of salt can do to a, a cup of tea. That is good to know. <clears throat> Perhaps I should take this to the Please. Oh, thank you, honey. You're welcome, sugar. <laughs> all right, what is all that about? I'll explain that later. We have more important matters to tend to. Oh? And you're not going to like it. Oh. Well, there isn't much about this arrangement that I do like. Oh. What is it now? He said you would have to give up teaching when you are married. What? Give up teaching? And manage the household. <clears throat> manage the household? He said a woman's place <laughs> in the home. <laughs> All the antiquated male chauvinist things to say. It is the 19th century, after all. I'm sorry, Catherine. What are you going to do? Oh, I won't do it. I'm so relieved. The thought of that man marrying it into our family. Oh, I still have to marry him. But he's off his rocker if he thinks that I am going to give up teaching. Oh, I work too hard to earn my teaching certificate. <clears throat> no one's going to take that away from me. I was hoping you'd changed your mind. How can I? The announcement's already been made. To back out now would bring shame upon our family. Well, I, I would be banned from Granger Manor and Grandmama would disinherit me. Where would I go? How, how would I live? Well, I know, but to be stuck in a marriage to that man, not only is he crass, but the way that he does business seems a bit skillmalink, if you ask me. Skillmalink? Yes. I'm not sure, but he, 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 something seems amiss. He claims it was all standard procedure, but Tim didn't even have a chance to read through the tr contract before he left. Maybe you're just nervous because you're assuming the responsibilities of running the orphanage. Perhaps. The lease has been signed, so I suppose everything is in order, at least on parchment. Well, have you been to tour the facility? Uh, not yet. According to your betrothed... Oh, don't call him that. <laughs> it is a well-old machine that b b b virtually runs itself. <laughs> well then, uh, perhaps we should just pop in and see for ourselves. I wouldn't want to be a disruption to the children's schedule. Oh, Evie, you own the place now. It's your job to be disruptive. I had thought of going on Monday to assess what, what's need, what's needed to be done. You can come with me if you like. You would know best what's needed in that area than I. Well, I will do anything to make me unavailable to you know who. Hmm. Did he give you any idea what the children have? Uh, well, uh, food, water, clothing, shelter, and education. A uh, Professor Redgrave has been the teacher there for the past few years. Any idea what he teaches? Well, I assume it's the usual reading, writing, and arithmetic, but that will only do so much. I fear that it, it would set them up to be educated failures by the time they, <coughs> their, they turn 15 and have to leave the orphanage to find work. Tim and I were hoping that the local businessmen in town were out to offer apprenticeships to the older children so that they may learn a trade. But what about the younger children? Mm. Uh, there's a garden there in the, at the orphanage the children help tend to, and those crops are used to help supplement the food needed to, for, to feed them. Uh, they also learn to wash, cook, sew, and clean. If there is enough left from the endowment, we hope to give each child a pence allowance so that it could be kept in a savings account, and when they outgrow the orphan orphanage, it would allow them to start their new life with a little money in their pocket. That would be helpful. Well, lady, there's a gentleman here, sir. Oh, I'm not expecting anyone. Did he leave you his name? Dr. Gray, ma'am. He sends a matter of urgency. Well, you had better send him in. I wonder what's so pressing. I'm sure, I don't know. Lady Cratchit will receive you now. <coughs> May I get a fresh pot of tea? Oh, thank you, James. That would be lovely. Ladies, I apologize for the intrusion. Um, uh, won't you sit down, Dr. Gray? That won't be necessary. I, this shouldn't take too long. Okay. Uh, well, allow me to introduce to you my sister. This is Miss Catherine Granger. Very pleased to make your acquaintance. Likewise. 
Uh, to it, do we owe the pleasure of your company today? It concerns the orphanage. If I'm not mistaken, you are the owners of that establishment? Oh, my husband and I, we manage the affairs of the orphanage as of uh, 20 minutes ago. Well, is he here? Uh, no, I'm afraid he is disposed at the moment. May I help you? Yes, my invoice for services rendered at the orphanage. Treatment for influenza, bronchitis, <coughs> okay. and head lice, the name of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it says here you're treating a child for black lung. Isn't that a coal mining affliction? Yes, it is. But then why are you treating a child for that? Why, indeed, and, and that doesn't account for the usual bumps and bruises and scrapes. Oh, well. Isn't the usual bumps and scrapes, isn't that uh, normal? I mean, I can remember having a few bumps and scrapes uh, when well, I was yes, younger. Yes, you did. <laughs> it taught me to be a little bit more careful. I suppose it's a lesson that every child should learn. Dave okay, said we have a guest. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Not at all. I was just discussing the matter of my invoices, uh, invoice for services rendered at the orphanage. I see. And when did these charges accrue? They are 30 days past due. Then you should take this matter up with the former owner. I would, but you can't petition a dead man. Oh. Uh, then I'm afraid that it is a loss you have to take. We only just signed the lease contract today, and the bank likely hasn't had time to file the paperwork. <coughs> well, uh, who do you think directed me to you? Well, I'm, I'm afraid I don't understand. Uh, according to your contract, you are to assume all debts, liabilities, and financial obligations previous and existing upon the signing of the contract. Oh, okay, right. We didn't agree to that. Uh, you didn't, but he did. <laughs> it is all here in black and white. This is your signature, Lord Cratchit? <laughs> it is. Well, where did you get this? We don't even have a copy of it. Well, you do now. When, when I stopped by the bank to inquire, Mr. Tweedlebaum asked me to drop it by since I was coming to a Granger Manor in. <laughs> Sniveling coward. I, I beg your pardon? Well, the underhanded, deceitful, scheming things. Oh, not you. Bad enough that I will have to tolerate him the rest of my life. I will not allow him to take advantage of my family. Ooh, smug. Arrogant, condescending, oh. ignoble thorn in my flesh. Well, why don't we all sit down and discuss this matter calmly and rationally? Uh, Catherine, would you pour our guest a cup of tea? I just take a little cream in mine. I believe the good doctor is quite capable of pouring his own tea. Uh -huh. That is a profession that requires a steady hand. Unless, of course, your wife caters to your tea pouring needs. Oh. I suppose you too think a woman's place is in the home. Catherine! I'm quite capable of pouring my own tea, and I do have steady hands. There is nothing wrong with a, a woman choosing to work at home, but it should be her choice. In my opinion, for what it's worth, women should be educated and taught a trade. Life is uncertain, and you never know when those skills need to be utilized. Oh? Oh. Uh, please forgive my sister, uh, Dr. Gray. I'm afraid she suffers from an arranged marriage. <laughs> ah, Mr. Twiddlebaum, I believe this, uh, you need this more than I do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, won't you please sit down? Sure. Dr. Gray, I was unaware of this clause. I was told that this was a standard lease contract, but there's nothing standard about this. I wouldn't have thought that our future brother-in-law would be so underhanded, at least not to family. I will make sure that your account is settled in full. I have no doubt that we will require your services at the orphanage in the future. Um, is there anything else we need to know about the orphanage? I'm afraid Mr. Tweedlebaum was not very forthcoming of the affairs at the orphanage. Yes. You know, I, I would uh, suggest an impromptu visit so you can see for yourselves. I can only speak to the health of the children. And there's a small infirmary that I'm allowed to use when I'm there, but, but I was told there aren't accommodations uh, for separating the children when they are sick. And so I'm, I'm afraid the illness will continue to spread. Many of them appear malnourished, but, but that could be the result of the illness. Most are treated for common ailments, but, 
the black lung, that is very suspect. What do you mean, suspect? Well, I can't prove it, and the, the children won't, won't talk to me when the staff is nearby, but I think the children are being forced to, to work outside the orphanage to, to earn their key. How, how old is the child with the black lung? He is only eight. Some children are sent into the mines because they can't navigate narrow passages and, and reach into crevices. And the external injuries? Well, that could be from from sweeping chimneys to working under textile. I, mean, I, I suppose as, as long as they are able to work, they can get into those places. <laughs> but they're just children. Yeah. Tim, what are we going to do? We can't allow them to be treated this way. And if they aren't able to perform these tasks? They are disciplined and encouraged to work hard. Disciplined? How? Well, if the welts in their back are any indication, I, I would assume they are whipped or, or cane. The world can be a, a cruel place for the destitute, abandoned, and homeless. Lady hey, Cratchit, are you all right? You look a bit pale. Please excuse me. I feel a bit all over it. <laughs> Tim, perhaps you should go check on Evelyn. I will see Dr. Gray to the door. Thank you for your information, Dr. Gray, and I hope you will come again, perhaps under more pleasant circumstances. Sure. Absolutely. Your hat, Dr. Gray. Ah, uh, thank you, James. I'm afraid I've overstayed my welcome. Oh, don't be silly, not at all. You'd have to be an invited guest to wear out welcome, and since you dropped by unannounced. <laughs> There's no harm in finishing your tea before you go. You mean the uh, tea that I served you? Oh. Shall I pour? Only if it doesn't offend you. It doesn't really offend me. I don't mind, really. Oh, it's just... It's the least I can do since I deprived you of your cut before. Sorry. <laughs> James, I'll get that later. Uh, how does Mrs. Gray prepare your tea? There is no Mrs. Gray. <laughs> I believe you said a little cream. Thank you. <laughs> so why are you... Have you, sure, have did you? Ladies <laughs> first. Uh, how long have you practiced medicine, Dr. Gray? Uh, uh, about eight years. I did my residency in Kensington. And what brought you to our little town? <clears throat> a measles outbreak. Uh, in the East End, uh, there's an experimental vaccine that has shown great promise in eradicating the disease. Uh, that's encouraging. Now, what do you do, Miss Granger? Well, I'm a teacher. I earned my teaching certificate last year. And where are you posted? Oh, well, nowhere yet. But I've been tutoring several children a few days each week. I love teaching. I love watching a child's eyes light up when they learn something new or, or they express themselves through their creativity and imagination. I know I'm doing something that will matter for years to come. You obviously have a passion for it. <coughs> no doubt that is more fulfilling than pointy. <laughs> Yes, not that I mind pouring tea. It's just that uh, some people believe it to be an inerrant responsibility once I marry. <laughs> well, if, if I may be so bold, why are you marrying a man that you despise? My grandmother arranged it. I didn't have a choice. Uh, of course you do. You, you make choices every day, what to eat and what to wear and where to go and how you like your tea, for instance. Why should this be any different? Well, the social standard is different for a man. You have more options. Ah. Well, I suppose that is true. And if I may be so bold, why isn't there a Mrs. Gray? Surely a man of your talents has caught the eye of many young ladies? You flatter me, Miss Granger. I, unfortunately, their mothers would disagree. I, although there are doctors who aspire to great wealth, I prefer to use my skills to use the less, uh, help the less fortunate. Hmm. And, and I'm afraid that's not a very appealing quality for the upper class. Besides, my schedule has me working long hours, and, and that's counterproductive to a marriage. 
Hmm, I see. So, why Mr. Tweedlebaum? Surely there is an eligible bachelor that is more suited to you in town. It is a small town, Dr. Gray, and the pool of bachelors is rather shallow. It's more a puddle than a pool, actually. There have been other suitors, but they were easily intimidated by an outspoken, educated woman. So, Mr. Tweedlebaum was the last available man in town. Grandmama raced right out and made all the arrangements before I had a chance to refuse. So now, after we're married, well, I'll be forced to give up teaching and expected to pour the tea. Well, I find that there is not so a problem so great that it can't be worked out over a good cup of tea. You know, it isn't too late to change your mind. It is. Then with that, Miss Granger, I will take my leave. Allow me to offer my congratulations or condolences <laughs> on your engagement, whichever you prefer. Oh, please, call me Catherine. I I'm sure we'll see a lot of each other now that Tim and Evie are running the orphanage. And, well, the children are sick, and you being their physician, our paths are likely to cross, because I'm family. Well, their family, not yours, of course. Uh -huh. You knew that, obviously. Thanks again for the cup of tea and the conversation, Catherine. Yes, uh, Dr. Gray, I am sorry. I wasn't going to come here. Another time, then. Of course. But, oh, actually, uh, <laughs> our family hosts an annual Christmas gala to raise funds for the orphanage in town. You would be most welcome to attend if you aren't otherwise engaged this evening. Will uh, Mr. Tweedlebone be attending? Unfortunately. I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> Good day, Dr. Gray. Okay. I can't believe there isn't a Mrs. Gray. Dr. Gray, confirmed on bachelor. I could have been Mrs. Gray. <laughs> Lord! Why couldn't you have sent him months ago to cure an e measles epidemic in the East End? Y you could have spared me a great deal of heartache and frustration. I know, not that he would have me. First I hurled insults in his general direction. <laughs> never mind they weren't intended for him, but a lady would never stoop to using such language. Oh, what was all that babbling about just now? Paths crossing and sick children. What a church bell I am, <laughs> clamoring on like that. Oh, I don't believe theirs, not yours. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh! <sighs> Catherine. What? <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Uh, Dr. Gray, an expected surprise. Uh, my, my apologies, who were you talking to? Well, Just now, when you were clamoring on like a church bell. Oh, um, no one. No one? Myself. Yourself. Well, if you must know, I was talking to the Lord. The Lord? <laughs> yes, the Lord. It's not an uncommon practice, Dr. Gray. Don't you ever talk to God? I would think you do, physician to great physician and all. I pray to the Lord reverently. I'm sorry, why are you still here? I forget my hat. Oh, allow me. <laughs> oh. Are you all right, Catherine? Of course. Why do you ask? You look uh, flushed. Do I? Do you have a fever? What? Uh, no. No, it's nothing. I, I must have been standing too near the fireplace earlier. All right. Well, I have my hat, and I will call on you again this evening. This evening? The gala. Yes, the gala. What time should I arrive? Uh, it starts at 7. Okay, well, then I will arrive half past six and to make sure that you are right. I would hate to think that I brought an illness from the orphanage into your home, and, and uh, I'm not convinced that uh, it was the fireplace that has you so hot and bothered. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fine, really, Dr. Gray. That's not necessary. I insist. Good day. <laughs> Sneaking upon me. Oh! 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 Is Evie all right? She will be, but are you all right? 
Yes. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, so what are we going to do about the orphanage? I am not sure yet, but if Dr. Gray's account is accurate, we will need to act quickly. I don't want our name associated with any business that is not above board. Our names and our reputations will be at stake. Well, Evie and I had planned to visit the orphanage on Monday, but it might be more beneficial to pop in today. Yes, I had considered that, but if the children are in a set routine, I wouldn't want to be disruptive. Well, and if the children are as sick as Dr. Gray says they are, you certainly don't want to run the risk of bringing disease or, God forbid, head lice into the manor with so many guests coming to the gala this evening. Oh, why, why don't you send for the governess and the professor so that they can come here and give an account of the goings on there, and, uh, but send for them one at a time. And that, that way you can make sure their own accounts match up. Splendid idea. I believe I will. Not that I distrust the word of Dr. Bray, no, but... why would we distrust Dr. Perhaps Bray? Perhaps a meeting with him, with, with them, would validate his discoveries. True. Lord Crotchet, a Miss Crawley is here to see you. I'm not acquainted with a Miss Crawley. Nor should a man in position be associated with a woman of such questionable moral fiber. Hmm. What does she want? I didn't ask, but trust me, she won't have a problem explaining it to you. You'd be lucky to get a word in edgewise. I was hoping to clear my schedule for the rest of the day to handle more pressing matters with the orphanage, but I suppose I can spare a moment for Miss Crawley, sir. Yes. I don't know the nature of her visit, but she did say you are her new employer. Huh. Well, show her in. Before I do, sir, how should I preface her visit? Because, well, I don't no know. No need to not be there. I am by my way on my own. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. A lady could die of old age waiting on you to present me to his lordship. Will that be all? Yes, quite so. I can manage on my own. You may go. Hello, I'm the governess at the asylum. I thought it would only be proper for me to stop by and introduce myself with you being my new employer and all. You are the governess at the orphanage? Well, that's what I said. I shouldn't have been slow. <laughs> no. Hello, my dear. I am Miss Crawley. It's very pleased to meet your acquaintance. Oh, that may be too big a word for such a simple-minded lock. Very pleased to meet you. Likewise, I'm sure. Uh, your visit today is unexpected, but since you are here, I would like to ask you a few questions about the orphanage. Exactly why I came to see you. Oh? Not you, dearie. Him. Excuse me for a moment. Tim. I am going to see if Lady Evelyn needs anything. Your services aren't needed, Derry. I can manage fine just on my own. Don't leave me alone with this woman. <laughs> <laughs> if she can manage just fine, so can you. <laughs> so, Miss Crawley, what can I do for you? Oh, straight to the point. I like a man who doesn't mince words. I've come to inquire about my wages. What about your wages? Well, they haven't been paid yet. And Mr. Tweedlebaum said I should speak to you since you own the place now. I see. Well, before we discuss the matter of your wages, I would like to know more about you. Oh, all right. My name is Miss Polly Crawley. I have been the governess at the asylum for about three years now. And before that, I was a well respected governess for a family a few years ago. I like honey and tea, or honey and lemon in my tea. Ooh, and truffles are my choice of chocolates. And red is my favorite color, like the Christmas poinsettia. And, oh, oh, what is, oh, yes, what else would you like to know? I wonder, Miss Crawley. Yes? Uh, what can you tell me about the children's daily routine? 
They're what? Uh, their schedule. For example, <clears throat> what time do they wake in the morning? And what time do they have their meals and have their lessons and play? Well, let's see. We wake them at half past six. Breakfast is promptly served at seven. Morning lessons begin by about nine, followed by time outside of this fresh air. Afternoon lessons from one to four. An hour to tidy up and ready for bed by nine. They only eat breakfast? Would you only eat breakfast? Uh, no. Well, there you go then. Okay, well, what are the children fed for their meals? Whatever we have in stock. For example? Uh, porridge. Porridge? For breakfast? Of course for breakfast. You wouldn't serve something like that for supper. And? And? What? You asked for an example. I gave you one. I see. And how many children are you caring for <coughs> at the orphanage? All of them, of course. <laughs> I mean, how many are there? Oh, too many. Really quite a shame, actually. All those sweet young faces. No home, no family, and no one to take care of them. Well, except for me, of course. I treat them like my own. You have children? Oh, no. Of course not. I'm not married. Having a child out of wedlock is quite scandalous. What kind of woman do you take me for? But you said you treat them like your own. Oh, what I meant was I treat them like my own if I had any, which I don't. But if I did, I couldn't take care of those precious little angels. Any health problems that I should know about? Well, that's a rather personal question, Lord Crashes. <laughs> I am sorry if that offends you, but it's important that I know. Very well. <laughs> it's really quite embarrassing, actually. I have this rash <laughs> on my shoulder. Uh, I think it's really just dry skin, but the doctor said if that were the case, it wouldn't be blistered and oozy pus. <laughs> oh, but it's not contagious, and I change the bandage every day, whether it needs it or not. So I really don't see why that would be pertinent to my employment. Do the children have any health problems? Oh, no, the children are perfectly fine. But why, are you looking to hire them as well? Not at this time. I think that will do for now, Miss... Polly Crawley. Yes. I'm sure you need to get back to your work. Yes, I should be getting back to those precious little cherubs. Plenty to keep me busy, as I'm sure you can imagine. And uh, Miss Crawley? Yes? Would you be so kind? Yes? As to provide me? Yes? With the names of those well-respected families you worked for in the past? What for? So that I can check your references, of course. Why would you need to know that? Mr. Tweedlebaum said the existing staff would be staying on. Uh, it is my understanding that the existing staff is willing to remain in my employ, but there is nothing in my lease contract that requires me to retain them. Are you quite sure? Quite. I have read it thoroughly. Well, then I'll just take my wages and be on my way. We can address your wages once I have received your references. And good day, Miss Crawley. I believe you can find your way. Getting ourselves into. Lord, I know that your word says that you would not put more on us than we can bear, but Polly, Crawley, oh, disease ridden woman around all the children, children's low immune systems, oozing pus, flaking skin, oh, the couch. Oh. Well, if you can deliver the Hebrew children from the plagues of Egypt, I suppose you can deliver us from the plagues of the governess. My lord. I don't care who it is, James. Send them away. Oh, lord. Is that any way to greet a duchess? <laughs> Margaret! Oh, thank the good lord, it's you! Oh, 
Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Where's Chuck? He sent his regrets, Lord Cratchit. Something about having to meet a deadline for his publisher and working through the holidays this year. Ah, well, Evie would be so disappointed to hear that. But we are so glad you could come down with you. It wouldn't be a Granger Christmas without you. <coughs> And I hope you weren't too uncomfortable <coughs> on your journey. <laughs> that good, huh? <laughs> well, James, why don't you place her chair near the fireplace? I wouldn't want her to catch a chill. Might take a wrap, Duchess. You must be tired from your journey. I am a little tired. Navigating the train with her chair was a bit cumbersome. Won't you sit down and <coughs> tell me about all about your journey? <clears throat> You've always been a very loyal attendant to the Duchess. She's very keen on you. You might even be her favorite. It's kind of you to say so, though. She would never admit it. The Duchess has always been such a gracious employer, though. Since her stroke, I'm afraid it's been a bit too quiet change of scenery this Christmas will be a welcome diversion. Oh, we nearly ran up a, a rather unusual woman in the hall as we were coming in. Anyone of importance? Uh, Miss Polly Crowley. Oh, what an unfortunate name. <laughs> <clears throat> well, she seemed quite put out. I hope I didn't do anything to offend your guests. Oh, no, she, she's not a guest. Uh, she is the governess at the asylum that Evie and I decided to uh, run. Pardon my saying so, but she doesn't seem like the type prone to mothering children. She made my skin crawl. <laughs> Let's not talk about skin. I've seen it in the last <laughs> lifetime. Oh. oh! Well, not that much, but enough. <laughs> As the dowager, dowager would say, she is a pricky little pod snapper. <laughs> so, uh, what did the doctor say was the dowager's prognosis? Well, she isn't able to move on her left side and seems to have lost the ability to speak. I fear it's affected her spirit as well. She's no longer receiving company at her home and tends to sleep a lot. Well, why don't you get settled while she is resting? I will have Miss Pattycake prepare some biscuits and tea, and then we can discuss your role here at Granger Manor. I have already spoken with Miss Pattycake, and I am glad to be in service any way I can. So if you will excuse me, I'm going to go freshen up and report to the kitchen. I'm sure there's much to do in preparation for the gala tonight. Indeed, of course. Uh, will you s we will see to the dowager's needs while you are here. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, are you feeling better? Oh, yes. Dr. Gray's report was a lot to think about. Was that Margaret? Yes, she accompanied the dowager, and we'll, we'll be helping in the kitchen with Miss Pettigate. Oh, right? uh, what about Charles? Oh, he couldn't come. He is inundated with his new manuscript and has to submit it to his publisher before the first of the year, but someone would like to say that. Uh, I didn't think she was able to speak after the... Oh, no, no, not audibly. But she can still say much with those eyes. <laughs> Grandmama, oh, I'm so happy you're here and that you're going to be spending Christmas with us today. Oh, let me look and see what I can do to help make your visit a little bit more comfortable. How about a blanket? I wouldn't want you to catch a chill. There. That's better. Oh, and a bell. Just ring, and James will come and assist you. James, he's our new butler. <laughs> no, Winston wasn't sack, as you call it. He chose to retire. He was, after all, 82 years old. I think you and James will get along quite splendidly. He's very capable. And I think that uh, I need to look at and go see about the final preparations for the gala this evening. Uh, and Miss Patty Cake, oh, I need to go see her. One of our guests is allergic to cinnamon. Uh, 
Now that won't do at all. I can't have you meddling back in the kitchen, interfering with me work, sir. Besides, I brought a nice fresh hot pot of tea. Let me see if I can get up these steps I'm getting so old. Oh my goodness, here's your tea. And oh. Who have we here? Well, she's <coughs> been helping me in the kitchen today. Oh? Yes, she's very shy, but she's a very good helper. Oh. Come here, child. It's all right. Can you say hello to Lord and Lady Pratchett? They're very nice people. And what is your name? I know. Perhaps we can guess it. Oh. Is it uh, Matilda? Uh, what about Gertrude? Oh, uh, uh, Josephine. Uh, Beatrice. Oh, I know. Fizzy Wiggins. Olivia. Olivia. Oh, well, it is very nice that you came to Granger Manor, and we're so happy that you're helping Miss Patty Kate today in the kitchen. Maybe we'll see you again later. It's all right now, Olivia. You may go back to the kitchen with Margaret. She will fix you some nice warm milk. Thank you for helping. Oh, yes, you may. I saved a few just for you. <laughs> now that she is out of the room, what is this really about? Well, this morning, sir, after Mr. Tweedledum, I mean Mr. Tweedledum, <laughs> <laughs> I decided I needed to go into town to pick up a few supplies for the gala tonight. And I thought it would be a nice gesture to take some Christmas cookies to the children at the orphanage. So, what a nice idea. What a I wonderful agree. idea. Well, when I got there, I was met at the door by a raven and eye bag who refused to let me in. Well, I told her I'd come to purchase some vegetables and that I wanted to leave some cookies for the children. And she said, the little nippers aren't here right now. And then she snatched me basket right out of my hands and shut the door right in me face. Shut the door to me. What an impertinent, cheeky woman. She, she's mad as up. Sounds like someone I know. <laughs> you said that she snatched your basket and slammed the door? Yes, sir. And before I could clear the stew, the door opened up. And she was there again, and she had my basket full of vegetables, with her hand held out for payment. And behind her stood Olivia. What did you pay her? Well, she wanted three pound fifty, but half the vegetables were fit to eat. So I told her, I'll give you three pounds flat. Take it or leave it. And she took it. And then she said, for a sprat, I know of a brat that could help your cooking claim in your kitchen. What is a sprat? It's a sixpence, sir. A brat <clears throat> for a sprat, she called her. When I told her no, she shut the door in my face again. <laughs> Did you see any other children then? Oh, no, ma'am. The curtains were all drawn and it was Quiet as the grave, not a pain. But you know, when I walked back through town, I noticed for the first time children were everywhere. They were sweeping the porch of the mercantile, crawling around on the floor under the machinery at the textile mill, standing outside the houses, Covered with chimney soot, they were just riddling about on the straight corners. You don't suppose those were the orphans? Well, 
I'm not sure, sir. But what are the chances the orphanage would be empty at the same time all these children are out in town? And that's when I realized that Olivia was the last. <clears throat> But that explains why the raven-haired haybag offered to provide you with a child to help you in the kitchen. So I went back to the orphanage, and I told the woman I had changed my mind, and that I would hire the girl after all. <clears throat> and as I waited, she turned and spoke to the child, and she said, You had better do good, so they will ask for you again. And if you don't, the professor won't be pleased. And you know the professor doesn't abide laziness or disobedience. The poor thing was scared after death when she was shoved out the door. And the A-bag said she ought to be back by nine o'clock or the door would be shut. And she'll be locked outside to fend for herself. Can you imagine a poor little girl outside in the bitter cold all night? This is absolutely appalling. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I should have asked you first, but I just wanted to bring her home. I'm sorry. No, I am not upset with you, Miss Pancake. You have a heart of gold. And you did right by bringing her here. The poor little thing was a dirty mess when we got here. I went upstairs to the attic. I found a trunk with some of the missus' childhood dresses. I picked out a dress for her. I drew her a bath and I washed her hair. When I asked her about the marks on her back, she grew very quiet. She said it was her fault. Her fault? Well, what could she have done to have possibly deserved that? It seems she had forgotten to put her shoes under her bed one night and the governess tripped over there. <clears throat> I asked her if the governess had done this to her and she said, Oh no, Mom, only the professor punishes us. <sighs> punishes them for leaving a shoe out of place? That's preposterous. When I put that dress on her, she lit up like a Christmas candle. She said she'd never seen such a beautiful dress or worn anything quite that beautiful. I asked her how long she'd lived at the orphanage, and she said it was the only place she'd ever known. It nearly broke me heart. That poor little girl, she's nine years old. <sighs> Tim, what are we gonna do? We can't send her back there. I agree. We are going to do something. And there are about to be a lot of changes at that orphanage. Miss, Miss Pattycake, please tell James to place some linens on the sofa. She may sleep there, and the dowager won't mind her being there in the room. And then after, to after tonight, we will make other arrangements. Miss Mum, thank you, Mum. Well, I let's get back to the kitchen now. Oh, Miss Pancake. Yeah. Olivia will be our special guest for the gala this evening. It would be nice if she had something suitable to wear. Oh, she'll be so excited. I'll take care of it personally myself. Shall I tell her? Let me. Oh, right. thank you, Mum. <clears throat> I don't know yet. I need to gather some more information and review our contract again. There are a number of things that aren't adding up yet. I agree. The, the garden at the orphanage was planted to help feed the children, but it would appear that it's being used for profit while the children go hungry. Yes, and I am also concerned that they are being exploited. Forced to work outside of the orphanage to earn their keep rather than earning a wage. We cannot be affiliated with any organization like this. Our name and our reputation will be severely tarnished. We can't abandon them. We won't, but we have to make this right, and we have to go about it the right way. <coughs> Don't say anything to anyone else about this. 
I am going to meet with the bank president. Mr. Higley Smith. Yes, I will need his assistance auditing some records, and we obviously can trust Tweet along to do it right. If I'm not back by the time the gala begins. I can handle the gala. Tim, be careful. I will. Uh, and don't worry, this will work out. How can you be so sure? Because the Bible tells us so. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, And we know that in all things God, God works, works for the, the good, good of those who love him, him and have been called according, according to his purposes. purposes. This is what we've been called to do, Evie. This is our ministry. God wouldn't bring us this far to abandon us in our hour of need. No, he wouldn't. I'll be home soon. <coughs> Lord, we need you. We need a miracle. Those ch children desperately need you. Help us to find what they need and help us to love them, Lord, as you have loved them. Help us to provide for their needs according to your riches in heaven and not just the meager offering we bring. And Lord, bless Olivia. She's endured more hardship than any child should have to. Amen. <coughs> yes, Olivia. I, I, I was hoping we could talk, get to know each other better. Why? Well, because you are a guest in our home. No, I'm not. I'm just here to help work in the kitchen. I have to be back home before nine. <laughs> Miss Pettycake said you did a fine work for her, so I wanted to reward you. Miss Crowley says we have to confess when I pray all of them. Why is that? We have to earn our keys. It costs a lot of money to put food on the table and clothes on our backs. We all have to do our part. Orphanages are the last self <laughs> What if you're not able to do your part? If you don't work, you don't eat. I sure am glad this paddock can need the help today. I am too. All I've had for two days is a bit of gully fluff. Gully fluff? Crumbs. Miss Crowley doesn't know it, but I hide them in my pockets whenever I have to clean the dishes from the tables. Mm -hmm. Olivia, I know you're supposed to give Professor Redgrave all your money, so what if I were to give you something else, uh, like, like a special treat? Miss Patty already gave me milk and tartlets, so you don't have to. I know I don't have to, but I would like to. What do you need me to do? I could dust and polish the silver, or I could sweep the ashes out of the fireplace. <coughs> Olivia, we already have someone on staff that does those things. I don't want you to do any more work around the manor. But Miss Pancake said I did a good job. She never seen anyone work this hard as me. Olivia, I don't want you to do any more work because I want you to be my special guest for the gala tonight. That is the reward. Miss Crowley says we aren't allowed. All the grown-ups get to. That's the rule. Well, that may be the rule when you're at the orphanage, but we're not at the orphanage, are we? No, ma'am. And Miss Crowley isn't here, is she? We're in my house, so we can follow my rules. And if I say you may attend the gala, then you may. How long does it last? A few hours. What do you say? Will you be my guest? Your special guest? Yes, my very special guest. All right, but I have to be back <coughs> by nine. It's going to be very cold and I don't want to sleep outside again. Promise? I promise you will not have to sleep outside. Would you like to meet her? I've never met a duchess before. I met her not. It looks like she's taking a nap. <laughs> Miss Crawley gets very cross if we disturb her while she's sleeping. Does she take a lot of naps? 
I just try to stay out of her way. What happened to her? Well, the doctor said that she had a stroke, so she can't walk or talk anymore. But we love her just the same, and we're happy that she could be here for the Christmas party. That's And, uh, of course she can come. Uh, why, why do you ask? Broken things don't get to stay in the orphanage. Uh, they get thrown out. Uh, so what do you do at Christmas party anyway? Will there be music? Yes, and there will be refreshments and punch, and we will sing right around, and we will um, sing Christmas carols, and oh, we will read the Christmas story about baby Jesus. Who? Baby Jesus. Have you never heard the story of baby Jesus? Will you tell it to me? Uh, well, Lord Cratchit usually reads the story, but I will do my best. You see these figures here? Each one has a very special part in the story I'm going to tell you. It is from the Bible. I know what a Bible is. <clears throat> oh, you do? Professor Redgrave put <clears throat> one on his desk. Oh, hmm. And does he read it to you? <laughs> Sometimes, when one of us disobeys him. Oh, and what does he read? Mary that she would be the mother of the Messiah. The angel said, Behold, you have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bear his son, and you shall call him Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. But this frightened Mary a little bit. Why? Well, because she wasn't married yet. Some people would think that she had done something wrong and would want to punish her. Why? Well, because that was against the rules where she was from, and they didn't have any orphanages for her to take the baby. Why would God want her to do something that was against the rules? Oh. Hmm. Well, I'd never thought of it that way, but maybe we should begin with the story about Adam and Eve. I know that one. Professor Redgrave told it to us. Oh, did he? He said that Eve <coughs> <laughs> or you wouldn't be orphans in the first place. Ah, oh, well, I see. Uh, Professor Redgrave has a rather unique perspective on that story. You see, God saw that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone, so he created Eve to help him. But Eve didn't trick Adam. She was deceived by the serpent in the garden. I don't like snakes. They're scary and slimy. <laughs> Neither do I. So, the serpent told Eve to eat from the tree of the fruit. Eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But she refused, saying God told them not to, or they would die. But that serpent was cunning, and he caused Eve to doubt what God had told them. He said, you will not surely die. So... When, so she chose to taste the fruit, and then she took it to Adam, and he chose for himself. When he saw that Adam, or when he saw that Eve had tasted the fruit and had not died, he chose for himself to taste it as well. And at that moment, they became aware of what was good and evil. They knew they had disobeyed God's rule, and even though God loved them very much, he could not allow them to stay in the garden anymore. That doesn't sound like a loving father to me. I don't imagine it does. But God is holy. And sin cannot be where God is. Oh, 
they chose to disobey God. And they had sin in their life. What does this have to do with being Jesus? God knew that the only way we could have a relationship with him again would be through a perfect, sinless sacrifice. So he sent the angel Gabriel to tell Mary that she would be the mother of God's son. And God knew that baby Jesus would need a father too. So he sent an angel to tell Joseph that it was okay for Mary to be his wife. So while Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth. And, but there was no room in the inn, so she had to give birth to him in a stable. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Other people. Oh, these are the shepherds and the wise men. The shepherds were watching their flock by night, and an angel appeared to them. There are a lot of angels in this story. <laughs> and there's about to be a lot more. The angel appeared to them and said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host, singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill to men. To the wise men? No, but they got they got a star. It was a it was a very bright star. And they followed the star to where they found baby Jesus. A star? Mm -hmm, that's right. And they brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those are strange gifts for a baby. <laughs> I would have gotten him diapers and bottles and blankets. <laughs> and baby things. Baby things. Well, I suppose that would have been helpful. But each gift had its own purpose. And just like God's gift of baby Jesus had a purpose, and 33 years later, when Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, that purpose was realized. If we believe in Jesus and that he died on the cross to save us from our sins, to restore a relationship with God the Father, and if we ask Jesus to come into our heart and be our Lord and Savior, then one day we will live in heaven with him forever. Amen. I never knew my dad. Can God be my father too? He sure can. If you want him to. I would like that very much, but I don't know what to do. Will you help me? I will. We can pray together. You can repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for loving us so much. That you were willing to die on the cross for our sins. That you were willing to die on the cross for our sins. We ask that you come into our hearts. We ask that you come into our hearts. And be our Lord and Savior. And be our Lord and Savior. Is there anything you would like to say? Dear God, thank you for sending baby Jesus. He is the best gift I ever got. Actually, he is the only gift I ever got. But now, because of him, you get to be my dad. And I can't wait to live forever in heaven with you. But until then, if you need to send me a message, could you just tell me to crash it? I think I've heard enough about angels for one night. Amen. Oh, and one more thing. If it's not too much to ask, could you please help the Duchess feel better so she won't be broke no more? Amen. Amen. Now I want you to go with Miss Margaret. And she's going to help you get ready for the party tonight. May I, yes, may, I, may I take baby Jesus with me? Oh, yes. As long as he is back before the party begins tonight. May I catch it? Do you have any kids? Oh, well... No, Lord Cratchit 
Christian and I wanted children, but I suppose God has a different purpose for my life other than being a mother. Well, that's too bad. You would be really good at it. <laughs> Run along. Oh, and I almost forgot. <coughs> I said a prayer for you. I asked God to fix you so you won't be broken anymore. <laughs> guests in style. Uh, our guest? That is rather bold for a man who's not family yet. I know. Don't remind me. He said he would be here an hour early and as a, uh, as a matter of great importance to discuss with me and would I please have a, a, a pot of tea ready when oh. he arrives? <laughs> I wonder what is so important that it can't wait. I don't know. But he should be here any minute. That's Warm enough. That'll be sufficient for the likes of him. Yeah, so. <laughs> I've got to go change as well. Will you be all right? I will have to learn to tolerate my circumstances sooner or later. May as well start now. Besides, this will give me a, a chance to have a little heart to heart with Grandmama. I won't be long. Good to see you, Grandmama. I was sorry to hear about your condition, but I am thankful that I have this opportunity to speak with you privately. And well, this way I, I can say what I need to say without any <laughs> condescending demands or interruptions. <clears throat> I, I don't mean to be disrespectful because I know you only want what's best for me. But I don't believe becoming Mr. Tweedlebaum's wife is what's best. He's not what he seems. I know he has money and a, and a position and a title. If I marry him, I will cease to exist. I won't be the independent, self-sufficient teacher anymore. All my hard work will have been for naught. Because he won't allow me to teach once we've married. I will be reduced to the submissive and silenced wife of Mr. Tweedlebaum. Expected to fetch his slippers and pour his tea and parade it through town as though I were a prize he'd won and done nothing to earn. I know I won't be happy. But I will follow through with this marriage of convenience so that I don't bring shame or embarrassment upon our family name. Consider it my Christmas gift to you. Are we handing out gifts already? <laughs> of course not. How can we start without you? Turn around. I want to see how my money looks on you. And <clears throat> Indeed, as for the small fortune on that dress, and I knew it would look standing on you, and I want you to look resplendent when I p -p 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 present you with your gift this evening. I believe you will be quite p -p 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 pleased with yours truly. Then I hope I do your money dress justice. You will, as soon as you go fix your hair. What? We can't have my fiance looking disheveled before the guests arrive. What will people think? But that will depend upon whom they are thinking. Run along, my little kitty cat, and pin those little stray hairs and place. I will thank you not to call me that. But it's such a cute little pet name. I 
am nobody's pet. You will be, and soon. I am counting down the days until you are Miss P -P 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 Presley, P -P 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 Porter, P -P 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 Pembroke, Twitter Bomb Third. Now run along now, and do as I say. I, I really shouldn't leave Grandma alone. I will stay in here and keep the Dowager company. Run along now. Well, hello, Dowager. <laughs> or shall I call you Grandmama? <laughs> Granny, want to know a little secret? Just a few more hours, and Granger Manor will belong to me. And I have you to thank for it. You see, I'm not just a banker. I'm what you call an opportunist. Working at the bank affords me access to everyone's financial records. And the Cratchits haven't made a more, an installment on their mortgage in over six months. Grounds for immediate foreclosure. But when you approached me about marrying your granddaughter, I saw the opportunity to make Granger Manor my own. And when I heard that Tim and Evie wanted to, to assume responsibility for the orphanage in town, I humbly offered my financial counsel and services at the bank. It only made sense for me to let me to handle their affairs, since I was about to become p -p 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 part of the family. <laughs> I spoke to the bank and convince them to p -p 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 postpone the forced closure when I will waltz in like the hero I am and satisfy the debt. <laughs> Naturally, Tim and Evie will need to relocate. P -p 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 Perhaps they can live at the orphanage with all the other outcasts. <laughs> 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 oh, but I almost forgot. The orphanage is about to be demolished. That old building isn't suitable to be inhabited. The former owner left it in a state of disrepair, but I suppose it is good enough for street urchins. <laughs> I know, Dowager, it is quite tragic. But there is nothing to be done about it now. The contract has been signed and notarized, legally binding. Naturally, Captain Roar remain here with me. But don't worry, I will take very good care of her. On second thought, now that you know, I had better not leave anything to chance. What are you doing? There you go. I was just trying to make the dowager more comfortable. Of course, I meant what are you doing here so early. I didn't expect... Any of the guests to arrive for at least another hour? I'm hardly a guest. I came a little early to surprise Catherine. She and Lady Cratchit are dressing, but should be down shortly. Precisely what I should be doing. But since you are here, I wanted to ask you if you could arrange a meeting with Professor Redgrave. I want to speak with him about a few policies that are in place at the orphanage. My lord, what is it, James? Professor Redgrave is here. Well, this is p -p 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 positively p -p -p providential. Show him in. Mr. Tweedledum, my apologies. I didn't realize you arrived so early. My name is Tweedledum. <laughs> it is such an extraordinary request that this p -p -p poultry servant of yours address me correctly and with the respect that I deserve. Didn't I? Oh my, I've offended my master's guests. Well, I guess I have to be reprimanded now. What shall it be, the oil or the rack? You wouldn't be so cruel to inflict carnage on a poor potsly servant like me, now would you? Well, you see, I did not know you were given such authority to give demands to stack here at Granger Manor. Now, what shall I do now, my lord? Show the professor in. I will meet with him here. Yes, sir. I will go and get dressed, and I will be back in a moment. Be a good chap and pour him a cup of tea, won't you? I don't p -p 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 pour tea. Suddenly, someone educated in banking and accounting can calculate the amount of tea required to fill an eight-ounce teacup 
I won't be but a moment. <coughs> Inconceivable that it would take this long to present me to the Lord of Correction. He that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 9. My apologies, Professor McGrath. As to wonder if he intended to hire such slovenly staff, were you in my employ, you would be dismissed. Oh, in your employ, I quit. What did you say? <laughs> oh, I said my lord will be down in a bit. <laughs> Good help is so hard to find. I trust you will tell me why it is I've been summoned here today. Summoned? You are an invited guest. I received no invitation. You are my invited guest. I see. Well, as long as we're here, I might as well give you this. <laughs> Professor Redgrave, you should have. It's your part of the orphan salary acquisition. But I'm glad you did. <laughs> now, what am I really doing here? Your new employer would like to meet with you to discuss the p -p 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 policies and p -p 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 procedures at the orphanage. Well, he may own the place, but I... Welcome to Granger Manor. You must be Professor Redgrave. I believe you already know Mr. Tweedlebaum of the Savings and Loan. Yes, we are acquainted. Thank you, James. That will be all. I apologize for my delay, but I had a few last-minute errands to run. That took longer than I anticipated. Mr. Tweedlebaum may be accustomed to waiting, but in my profession, tardiness is not tolerated. I run a tight ship at the orphanage. Anything else would result in disorganization and chaos. Mr. Tweedlebaum, explain to me that you are quite diligent in handling of the affairs at the orphanage and its inhabitants. My work speaks for itself. You'll find no one more committed to the task at hand than I. After all, idle hands are the devil's workshop, a principle I instill in all of my charges. With 43 wards in your care, no one can accuse you of being idle. On the contrary, you have been quite busy. As have we, from the moment we signed the lease contract, there has been a flurry of activity in our home. As you know, the gala this evening was served to raise funds for the orphanage. I realize that organizing such an event doesn't fall under your preview, but it really is quite an undertaking. You can't imagine my relief to come home and find that Miss Pattycake hired a young girl to work in the kitchen today. One of the orphan children at the behest of Miss Crowley, whom I might add paid me a visit this afternoon that was quite enlightening. Oh. I think I will go see if Lady Catherine has finished dressing. We might take a walk around the grounds before the gala begins. I will leave you two gentlemen to discuss your business pr 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 privately. I've had my methods questioned in the past. Now, I'm sure there's nothing Miss Crawley said about me that can't be defended by the word of God Almighty. I teach the children to read and write using scripture. It can shape the mind as well as the soul through diligence, determination, and good old-fashioned discipline. That ye might walk worthy unto the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. I see. And to what form of discipline do you describe? Whatever form of discipline is appropriate to the offense, dictated by scripture, of course, Spare the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> Obedience of the rules is expected and demanded. Aside from the Ten Commandments, the children are required to adhere to the following. Study to be quiet, to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Is that all? Lest they become idle, wandering from house to house, but also tattlers, busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 
verse 13. <laughs> For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. But what do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline, or shall I come to you in love and with a gentle spirit? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 21. It's not my job to love them, it's my job to teach them. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. Proverbs chapter 13. Verse 8, no chastening in the moment is joyous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the righteous fruit of peaceableness unto them which are exercised thereby. So you see, it is a necessary evil for the betterment of the child. We live in a cruel world. It's up to us to teach them, give them an education, teach them a trade so that they can contribute to society without being a constant drain on its infrastructure. I didn't realize you were such a religious scholar. I take my faith very seriously. Well, James chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 tells us that those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive only themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. We are doing these children a great disservice by excluding love from their curriculum. Without showing them and teaching them the love of God, everything else we teach them to do is meaningless. With all due respect, Lord Cratchit, Love is what made them orphans to begin with, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Absolutely not. Love is what gave them life. Circumstance and neglect is what made them orphans. As much as I would like to continue this little debate, it would appear that my, I need to find Jesus. Indeed you do. <laughs> I know I placed him here in this nativity. The Dowager got Evelyn this nativity years ago, and baby Jesus is her favorite piece. I can imagine what has happened to it. Are you certain you placed it on the table? Yes. Yes. You can't have Christmas without Christ. Well, then it would appear you have a thief in your midst. Indeed, I do. <clears throat> Um, allow me. I'm quite good at flushing out a thief. We've had to deal with such behavior from time to time when a new orphan comes to the asylum. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 14. Yes, but you are not God, Professor. No, but I am his hand and his voice. Perhaps it would be best if we finished our discussion later. I look forward to it. At this time, we'll be serving dessert and coffee as requested.
That's what we just said. Okay.
graduate has decided to invite the staff to the gala this evening. Oh, to serve the food and punch. And that, you will be guests. You will be eating this oh. delicious food tonight from this table. Oh, wonderful. Oh. Will there be any left of I don't believe there will be. And if there are, we're to take them to the orphanage. Well, we've never taken them to the orphanage. Well, we are tonight, and there won't be another word about it. Yes, ma'am. Well, if we're eating this tonight, I might as well get a head start for uh, 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 You must wait for the guests. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I can manage the kitchen alone for a few hours. Don't have that good help anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm not coming. I've seen one gala, I've seen them all. So you two must run along and get into your Sunday best. You have to look lovely for the rest of the guests. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. They do look rather tasty, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just you start, not it? Oh, uh, 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 I fear you've caught me with my hand in the cookie jar. Well, your secret is safe with me, Miss Patty Kate. Did you bring me one? Oh, would you like a truffle or a biscuit? <laughs> ah, you're talking! <laughs> <laughs> well, of course I'm talking. Missy said you couldn't speak on account of your stroke. Oh, it's a Christmas miracle. <sighs> well, don't believe everything you hear, Miss Patty Just because they said it doesn't make it so. And you would be surprised what people will say in front of you when they think it's the only thing that is that has come from being confused into this confounded chair. Is there anything more I can do for you? Well, if you would move me a little closer to that window, it would be so much nicer. I've sat by this fire so long, I'm beginning to feel like a pig on a spit. If I can leave this heavy chair, I love pushing you around. And hey, no, I didn't mean it that way, Mom. I mean, I love putting you in your place. I know, I didn't mean it that way. I'm so sorry. Oh well, here we are. I think, right, I need to move you over up here so I can get out of here. I'm a fat lady, you know. So, here we are. I think you're good. Now, what else? Anything else? Well, if you would join me for a cup of cider. Oh, well, if you like. <laughs> you always did make the best cider, Miss Pancake. You simply must share the recipe with my cook. Oh, well, I can't do that, Mum. That's been a family secret as long as I've worked for the Granger Manor. But I'll be glad to fix it for you any time you like. May I ask you a question? Certainly. What is it? Well... Your family has been so worried about you. Why are you keeping them in the dark? What's to be the pill in this jam? Why the charade? Well, my reasons are my own. And my ability to speak must remain secret, at least for a while. But I feel there is an ill wind blowing through the manor, and it is my duty to write the sails, so to speak. In due course, it will all be revealed. Well, I'll keep your secret if you keep mine. <laughs> oh, I think I hear someone coming. Um, oh, that's my cue. Why you want to be a teacher? Um, one more thing. Would you mind taking all the pillows what off the it? furniture, please? The pillows? Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and I will take care of the rest. Whatever, I can do this without stealing the spider. I'm just going to put it over here, maybe now that you will drink out of it. 
Well, maybe Mr. Tweederbaum will drink a bit. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I don't know why you have your niggas in the thought. You have known from the beginning what would be expected of you. I made it very clear to eliminate any p -p 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 pretense. None of the Twitter bomb women work. If you think for one minute I am going to give up my teaching career to be at your every beck and call, you are quite delusional. I refuse to be displayed to your snobbish friends as though I were some shiny new toy and tackle. Oh, look at the time and look at my beautiful wife. She used to be a teacher, but now she's got more important things to do, like b -b 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 pour my tea. <laughs> Is it asking too much in exchange for my good name and fortune that you always see the affairs of our home and look respectable while we're in p -p 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 public? Is that all? Yes. After you have provided me with an air, of course, a little Tweedle bomb to carry on the family name. <laughs> I realize it's a sacrifice. And if we only had daughters? Oh. That will never do. We'll simply have to keep trying until the sun comes along. Ah! Again, I realize it's a sacrifice. But it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Ah! You're incorrigible! <laughs> well, well, well. My little kitty cat has claws. I don't mind. I love a woman with little spirit. <laughs> that is quite... Enough spirit for one day. I don't care if you have all the gold in King Solomon's mind. There are more important things in life than money. Unfortunately, you don't possess any of those qualities. So this is what comes from educating women. I have never been so insulted. Well, there's a first time for everything. You aren't fooling anyone with your airs and graces. You can dress a pig in a suit, but at the end of the day, oh my it is still just a pig. <laughs> Nevertheless, you are stuck with me whether you like it or not! <clears throat> now I know what no other means, no matter means would have you. Go! And after this disgraceful display of character, I will make sure no one hires you to tutor their children once I've had my say. Uh. They are, after all, my clients at the bank. Money is quite a motivator. I would tell you what you can do with your money, but I am a lady. You will be my wife! Oh, that's not necessary. Oh. 
Well, I might as well get used to the idea of a life of service. <sighs> Mr. Uh, Tweedlebaum? I passed him in the hall looking none too pleased. <laughs> he called me kitty cat, <laughs> so I insulted his vanity. Clearly. Did you want to talk about it? Not particularly. I'm told I'm a very good listener. It won't do any good. It won't make a difference. What a shame. Here I was thinking the uh, wedding of the century had been called off. Oh? For, uh, for your benefit, of course. Uh, it's abundantly clear that you do not love him. Well, I never pretended otherwise. Then why? Because that's what's expected of me. You know, at the risk of being too forward, and I have boulder dash. He said I don't want to talk about it. Uh, okay. All right. <clears throat> nice weather we are having today. I, I thought it might rain earlier, but I was thankful it didn't. I was worried that it would put a damper on this evening's events. Hmm. Are you really talking about the weather? Have you nothing more interesting to say? Well, we could talk about that pain in your wrist. It's, it's nothing. It's clearly something. Let me look at it. No, it... Did he do this to you? I shouldn't have been so outspoken. So he did this to you? But you can't tell anyone. Catherine. Catherine, look at me. <coughs> An honorable man would never treat a woman like he has treated you. Men like him, if they don't get what they want, they'll take it. If he would do this to you in your own home, imagine what he would do in his. Walk away from this while you still can. Here. What am I going to do? Is that what we are, friends? I'll keep it. That's all that we can be. You are engaged. <sighs> I don't suppose you keep a bottle of arsenic in that medical bag, do you? <laughs> no, and, and even if I did, I wouldn't give it to you. Well, it wouldn't be for me. Well, I still couldn't give it to <laughs> you. <laughs> well, how about something less terminal, like a, a fixin or, or a Karnak? A laxative? Well, it won't kill him, <laughs> but it will keep him out of my sight. You want me to give your fiancé dysentery? What? It's not fatal. It can be. Oh? <laughs> I'm afraid the only thing I can give you is a bit of advice. Oh, advice? <coughs> I thought you took an oath to help people. I, I, I did. Help me. Helping you like that would, would not only contradict my oath, it would have us both in prison for a month of Sundays. I'm, I'm sorry, but you'll have to come up with, some, with a better plan. <coughs> Marry me. What? <laughs> Marry me. Oh, you can't be serious. Uh, what would your grandmother say? Nothing! She's had a stroke! <laughs> she, she, she said the, the only condition was that I be married by my 29th birthday. This could work. Well, when is your birthday? Oh, we're long since past that. <laughs> we haven't any time to waste. But, but we, we barely know each other. You don't even know my first name. Yes, I do. It's... Well, it's... Well, how can I know what it is if you've never told me? Besides, I, I would never disrespect your profession by, by calling you by your first name. As long as it doesn't start with a P, we'll get along splendidly. <laughs> Philip? Philip. Philip. Oh. What's your middle name? Hawthorne. Huh. Dr. Philip Hawthorne Gray. I can live with that. You know nothing about me. Yes, I do. Like what? Oh, uh, well, um, well, you did your residency at Kensington, and uh, you like a, a, you like a little cream in your tea, and you, you care for the sick and the afflicted, and uh, the you know, occasional woman in emotional distress. <laughs> and before I arrived this evening, all I knew about you was you were outspoken, strong-willed, opinionated, and a teacher with no posting. And who tutors wealthy children? Well, that's enough to get us started for now. And, and we'll have the rest of our lives to figure out the rest. You said to yourself, we're friends. Friends get married all the time. Oh, 
Reverend Fitzgibbons will be at the gala this evening to say a blessing over the orphanage. He, he can perform the ceremony. He can do it tonight. Tonight? You, you want to get married tonight? <gasps> yes, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know such thing. I, I could never propose to a, to a woman who is engaged to another man. Well, I am trying to rectify that, but you're being difficult. <laughs> Well, pardon me for being difficult. I, but a moment ago, you implied that you either wanted to kill your fiancé or have him running to the loo in perpetuity. I, good Lord, what would you do if you were mad at me? Well, nothing like that. You're a doctor. You figured out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just marry me. I'm desperate. <laughs> desperate. Well, that's flattering. <laughs> I'm not marrying you out of desperation for who you are. But I am desperate to not marry Mr. Presley Porter, Pembroke Tweedlebaum the third. We, we are not getting that. I know it's unorthodox and. and I, I know you do not love me. I mean, my behavior today is enough to give any man cause. <laughs> but in time, you could. We could grow to love each other. Catherine. Well, if not for love, then marry me for my money. <laughs> People do that sort of thing all the time as well. Well, you would be able to <coughs> care for your patients without any concern for recompense, and we both get what we want. That would make us both susceptible to ridicule and gossip. What more do you want? I've already surrendered my pride and what little dignity I have left. I would get down on one knee, but this corset is so tight I might swoon. <laughs> please, please marry me. Catherine, you are a strong, beautiful woman, but you're going about this all the wrong way. Any, any man would be a fool to refuse you. And I, I may regret, regret this, but... I can't marry you. Not like this. You deserve better and you should fight for it. That's it then. It's your choice. You, you have the final word. Don't, don't let him take that away from you too. But why don't you go for a little walk before the gal begins? Uh, you look like you could use some fresh air. Doctor's orders. Do you want some more cake? All right. Well, You know, you can change your mind. Oh. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs>
take the baby Jesus from this table. Uncle Nis said I could play with it as long as I brought it back before the party. Does it belong to you? No. No what? No professor. What do we call people who take things that do not belong to them? But I have permission. What do we call people who take things that do not belong to them? I put it back like I was supposed to. What do we call people who take things that do not belong to them? A thief. A thief what? A thief. So, what does that make you, Olivia? But I'm not a thief. I have permission. And I brought it back like I was supposed to. Just ask the miss. Olivia! I was prepared to wait until we got back to the asylum, but a thief cannot go unpunished. Sure, Lord Cratchit will be pleased to know that the thief has been caught expediently. If you know what to do, place your hands on the table. What uh, Olivia? Oh, what is going on here? This matter does not concern you, madam. Anything that happens in this house concerns me. And this matter concerns me a great deal. This child is a ward of the orphan asylum and a thief. <laughs> I know very well who she is, and she is no thief. She has confessed to the offense, and it is my duty to administer an appropriate punishment. Quote the verse, Olivia. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Uh, don't you dare lay a hand on this child! <clears throat> Let one get away with theft, they will all expect to get away with theft. Now stand aside, you meddling woman, and let me do what I need to do. No! Stop! How dare you raise your hand at my wife! Your wife? My apologies, Lord Cratchit. I didn't know who she was. But you will be relieved to know that the thief has been caught and the baby Jesus returned to the stable. I was just about to punish the thief when she interfered. I gave her permission <laughs> to hold on to baby Jesus until after, until before the party began, which as you see, she returned it like she was supposed to. We teach the children to touch anything that does not belong to them. Hmm. She knows the rules, and that is not allowed. Are you trying to dictate to me what is and isn't allowed in my own home? Of course not. But we can't allow one child to receive preferential, preferential treatment over another. It breeds discord among the lot. So, what you're saying is, you beat them all equally? Yes. Well, no. Only those who are disobedient. The same punishment for each of us. God sees all sin the same. Why should I do any less? Is everything all right? <laughs> I heard a commotion. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Redgrave was just explaining to us that all sins are the same, and therefore shall all want the same punishment. I wonder, Mr. Tweedlebaum, do you share in his opinion? Um, uh, Professor Redgrave has been a disciplinarian at the orphanage now for a number of years now without complaint. He must be doing something, right? Then you agree, for example, that theft, assault, and perjury should each want the same punishment. What are you insinuating? My lord, Sorry for the interruption, but Miss Crawley has... No need to announce me! Oh my God! I sure hope I'm not too late. I sure love with Nancy knocking. What's oh, all this Christmas swearing? Impeccable timing, Miss Crawley. Oh? We were just debating the topic of justice equality. Now, why would you want to talk oh, about that? What does that have got to do with Christmas? What? Never mind. Okay. Oh, thanks for the invitation, by the way. Oh, look, chocolate truffles. You remembered. I didn't send you an invitation. You didn't? Well, then who did? I did. 
did? <clears throat> you. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. <laughs> Allow <laughs> <laughs> me to introduce Lady Cratchit. Yes. A Lord Cratchit's wife. Of course you are. <laughs> oh, uh, Lord Cratchit has told me so much about you. Oh, funny. He didn't talk about you at all. As a matter of fact, there was a different woman here earlier. You remember that blocky little bird? There she is, Leo. Hello again. You look lovely this evening. Is Dr. Gray your escort? No, he most certainly is not. Miss Granger, may I have a word with you, please? Be sure to use small words. I believe she's a bit daft. It's good, to see you. it's good to see you again, Mr. Tweedlebaum. Tweedlebaum! Miss Catherine talks about you all the time. Oh, does she? <laughs> and how do you know my fiancé? Well, we have been friends for quite some time. Isn't that right, Kitty Cat? Uh, yes. <laughs> Kitty Cat? <laughs> that's, that's right. Chuckaboo? Chuckaboo! <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> look at the time! Oh, how about we start with some old-fashioned Christmas carols? Deck the halls with bells of holly. La 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. La 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 la. Anyone? Anyone? Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, I'm in the middle. Never mind. Now that everyone is here, I have an announcement to make. Miss Crowley, Professor Redgrave. The orphanage is being investigated. Investigated? What for? I haven't done anything wrong. Everything I do is dictated by Bible authority. My conscience is clear. What evidence is there to support your recommendation for this investigation? Thank you, James. This afternoon, I paid a visit to Mr. Higgledy Smith. I believe you know him. He is, after all, the president of the Savings and Loan. I thought it prudent to have an audit done of the accounts of the orphanage since Dr. Gray had not been paid for his services for the last 30 days. We looked at the payroll, we looked at the children's records and expenditures and supplies. Well, my, 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 aren't you thorough? Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, <laughs> verse 10. Those records are my responsibility. I would have shown you anything you wanted to see. All you had to do was ask. I can't imagine you found anything at a place. I document everything, every bill, and every invoice. Everything except for cash receipts. Cash receipts? Yes. For the vegetables, you say? Oh my God! The ones that are grown at the orphanage to ensure that the children are well fed and the wages that you receive for the work you require the children to do for the prominent families and merchants in town. Speaking of wages, you still haven't paid me mine. Yes, and I still haven't received your references. Now about those vegetables. I don't know what all this fuss is about. Children don't even like vegetables. I like vegetables. Hush, child. No, you don't. You sold Miss Patty Cake a basket full of vegetables just today. I'm not sure who that person is. I've never heard of her. Then allow me to make the introduction, Miss Crowley. I would like you to meet Miss Patty Cake. She manages our kitchen here at Granger Manor. Well, if it isn't the Wyvern and I bag I was telling you about earlier today, what are you doing here? And the same person with whom you sent a little orphan girl to work for the sum of a meager sixpence. What did she call it, Miss Patty Cake? A brat for a spread. Come to take a back and do what you can ever. 
It is an ag law against the law to sell vegetables. People sell things in the street every day. Indeed they do, except, Miss Crawley, when you are selling things that do not belong to you and pocketing the proceeds, that is theft. Is this tail? Oh, that's something more I'd like to say. No, Olivia, the magistrate will deal with her punishment. Now, on to Professor Redgrave. Perhaps you can educate the rest of us on the matter of the wages received for the work you require the children to do? I don't deny the children work outside of the orphanage. We can't coddle them the rest of their lives. But you don't coddle them at all. <coughs> it's important to teach the children a trade. At some point, they have to leave the asylum and become productive members of society. I might be persuaded to agree with you, except that there were no records or ledgers to account for their wages. Not uncommon for princesses to go unpaid. Their education of the trade is their reward. You said yourself you found no record of wages. So unless you have evidence to substantiate your insinuations, I will take my leave. That is why your personal accounts were audited as well. It was there that we found where the cash had been deposited. Accusations are preposterous. You won't find a magistrate anywhere that would convict me. Your proof is merely circumstantial at best. Well, I am appalled, shocked, flabbergasted to hear this. I had no knowledge of this scandalous behavior. How could you? They're just poor, 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 poor little orphan children. Yes, they are only children. And I have had it with your pod snapper. Oh. He can keep it his mouth, keep it his life. So, we're back to quoting scripture, are we? Well, I have a few that I believe will be quite relevant. It is time, Lord, for thee to work. For they have made void thy law. Their idols are silver and gold. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house, and he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, they shall be destroyed forever. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. All from the book of Psalms. Lord Cretchen, I hope you don't think I had anything to do with this. Why, we're p -p 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 practically family. <laughs> not any more. What is this? Duchess, you're not a drug anymore. I pray God fixed you. Oh, yes, oh I suppose God. he did. And Dr. Gray, if you will check his pocket, I will be, believe you will find the orphan's wages. What do we have here? In whose hand is mischief? mischief, mischief? And her, the right hand is full of bribes. You are mistaken. That is not what that is. Really? B because the receipt inside proves otherwise. Uh, for wages and services rendered by the orphanage, residence paid to Mr. P.P. Tweedlebaum III. His name is Mr. P.P.? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that you would steal wages from children who have nothing but the raggle tackle clothing upon their back. They didn't ask to be born into these circumstances, born to parents who neither can nor will take care of them. But it is our Christian duty to take care of them. And for you to abuse your authority and your position to take advantage of such as these, that is nothing. Grandmama, I've never heard you speak so passionately about orphans. <coughs> Why the sudden change? Oh, don't be impertinent, Evie. My heart has never changed. But the last time you came to visit, your description of the matter was spawn that lit of the streets in their raggle taggle clothing, preying upon mm -hmm. our kind for charity. <laughs> you are confused, Evelyn. My statement in its entirety was that the philanderers that would take advantage 
of these unsuspecting young women. And then their spawn would litter the streets. Children that have nothing. These are orphans that can't take care of themselves. They are not responsible for the situation that they find themselves. But if they choose to stay that way, that would be up to them. How can these children expect to make something of themselves when society will only see them as they are? Are you saying that's how society sees me? Of course not. Why would I? You're a duchess. Well, I wasn't always a duchess, you know. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I was very young when my parents died. I was orphaned at the age of 10. And I was sent to live in the asylum. From there, I was sent to work in a very wealthy manner. And I decided that I would not let my current circumstances dictate my future. So I studied everything about that family, how to walk, how to talk, how to dress, how to act respectably. And my efforts paid off. For one day, I was invited to attend a grand gala at the Granger Manor. And it was there that I attracted the eye of the Duke. And the rest, they say, is history. I can't believe Mama never told us this story. Well, she never knew. We never spoke of it for fear that it would bring shame upon the Granger name. So the Duke and I chose to keep it a secret. So why share your story now? <laughs> well, it's simple, really. Therefore, but for the grace of God, would go any one of us. And when scoundrels like Tweedlescum <laughs> takes advantage of those who cannot help themselves, then drastic measures must be taken. And I've had my suspicions about the affairs of the orphanage for quite some time. So your stroke was a ruse all along? No. It did affect my left side, but my speech was never affected. And you would be surprised to know what people will tell you when they think that it can't be repeated. But we, we were told that your speech was likely affected as well. <laughs> well, just because they said it doesn't make it so. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what I am going to do. <clears throat> Catherine, the wedding is off. <gasps> I don't have to marry you. <laughs> no, you may consider it my Christmas gift to you. Thank you, Grandmama! And Catherine, Granger women never grovel. Oh. Yes, Grandmama. Besides, I have someone much better in mind for you. You know Dr. Gray? Well, he was the attending physician when I had my stroke. Duchess, at last we may bring this charade to an end. You knew? <laughs> you knew the whole time she was pretending and you didn't say anything? It was your grandmother who arranged for me to treat the children at the orphanage. She knew there were, the children weren't being cared for, but uh, I couldn't prove it until now. It was imperative that uh, we allow you to believe that she was incapacitated so as not to reveal the plan before she had proof of what she needed. I wanted to tell you, but I gave her my word, and I always keep my word. You are a man of great worth, Dr. Gray. And a man of great worth trumps a great man, a man of great wealth any day. Wouldn't you agree? Well, <clears throat> surely there's something you can do to repay his kindness, Grandmama. <clears throat> well, there is one thing. Catherine, Eleanor, Granger. <gasps> no, 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 you don't, you can't be serious. Will you do me the honor? No, no, I don't have to marry him anymore, it's all right. I'll be coming. No, no, you don't, you don't know anything about me. My wife. <laughs> well, great worth trumps great wealth any day, wouldn't you agree? I do. This is absurd! I forbid it! Yes, <laughs> on one condition. <laughs> remember who asked first. <laughs> You'll pay for this. No one makes a mockery of a Tweedle bomb. You think you have it all figured out. You know nothing. My dealings with the orphanage have merely been a distraction. Perhaps. But at this point, anything else is just redundant. This matter alone 
We'll see you locked away for quite some time. Ah, oh, Lord Cratchit! <laughs> the lowly accountant! You were so preoccupied with the orphanage that you neglected the affairs of your own estate! What have you done? You are mistaken. Granger Manor has never been more secure. Manor hasn't remitted p -p 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 payment for its mortgage in six months. These are the first closure documents. It gives me great pleasure, p -p 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 pleasure to announce that as of December 31st, it belongs to me. Merry Christmas! <laughs> How could you? I merely took advantage of an unfortunate situation. Oh, my dear, sweet Catherine. I had hoped to surprise my blushing bride with the news that Granger Manor would belong to us. But since the wedding is off, however, I might be persuaded to let them stay if... Hmm. Never! Oh, Catherine! <laughs> I can overlook it this time. Seven days! You can't do this! This has been our family home for generations! <laughs> and now it will be my home for generations to come! Once again, you are ladling calculation. This foreclosure isn't worth the parchment it's written on. I researched the account b -b 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 personally. <clears throat> there have been no b -b 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 payments since July. What? Of that, I am certain. That is correct. There have been no payments remitted since July. <laughs> this should be good. Because I settled the estate in its entirety, and I had the deed forwarded to myself for safekeeping at Granger Manor. So you see, Mr. Tweedlescum, you can do nothing. <laughs> Truly, the love of money is the root of all evil. <laughs> The three of you were running quite a racket together. The charges of larceny, exploitation, neglect, extortion, assault, should be more than sufficient to prevent any of you from taking advantage of anyone ever again. Still no wages. You won't need them where you're going. Can't convict a man for doing the Lord's work. <coughs> that is for the magistrate to decide. God alone is my judge. Oh, you, you will have plenty of time to talk to him while you're waiting your trial. You won't get away with this! No one makes a fool of a Tweedle Bomb! Mr. PP, you have the right to remain silent. Come with me. No! I think we will. But if my word, the orphanage records, the medical records, and audits of your personal accounts aren't enough to convict you, then perhaps we should ask our guest from the prominent families and marches in, in town to bear witness, all of whom are in attendance tonight to make their contributions to our orphanage. The corp has arrived and enough ruffles for the lot of them, and the paddy wagon is ready to escort them to prison. Get them out of my sight. Uh, wait! Olivia? Professor Redgrave? Are you alright? I forgive God for forgiving me for my sins. The least I can do is forgive me for this. Can we read the Christmas story now? 
I believe that's a wonderful idea. <gasps> I get to be the angels! <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> And this was the last year that Cratchit hosted the annual Christmas Gala at Ranger Manor. The orphanage in town was closed down, but the orphans were relocated to Devonshire by none other than the Dowling. Now, the estate was deeded to Lord and Lady Cratchit, but in the condition that they only use it for what cause is near and dear to their heart. The residential institution of education, health, and for the abandoned Raggle Taggle Spawn, but we just call it the Devonshire. Catherine and Dr. Gray were hired as resident teacher and physician on staff. After a year of waiting for the good doctor to set a date for the wedding, Catherine took matters into her own hands once again, and they were married a week later. <laughs> the Dowager took a residence at Granger Manor and continued to host the annual Christmas gala for many years to come. But it isn't the songs that we sing, the decorated trees, or the feast we share at Christmas, but it's with God's gift to mankind, a son Jesus who is born to humanity and in the filth of a state. You see, we are all orphans separated from our Heavenly Father. But God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And if we accept God's gift of grace and mercy, then one day too we will spend eternity with him. The greatest gift we could ever have and will be sung through the halls of Granger Manor for years to come. A remembrance of the events that occurred one Christmas inspired by the love of family and the faith and compassion of an extraordinary little girl named Olivia Twist. the little girls that came around and, and served you this evening. And so we thank you for your support with uh, what they did. Uh, if you would just uh, bow with me, we're going to say a blessing and uh, let you guys get on the road because I know it's getting a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for bringing us together this night and for this time of fellowship and, and laughter and, and above all, uh, getting back to the true spirit of what Christmas is, and, and that is your gift to mankind, our Savior. And we just pray that as we go forward in the holiday that you would keep that in the forefront of our minds, that we would be filled with a, a spirit of thankfulness for all that you do and all that you have done. Bless our guests this evening with traveling mercies. Take them home safely tonight. And we just ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Miss Potter Cake's recipe for Christmas coffee. 1 square chocolate 1 quarter cup sugar dash of salt 2 cups boiling water 1 cup milk and heavy cream 1 teaspoon vanilla extract 2 cups hot coffee. Melt the chocolate in top of double boiler. Add sugar, salt, and boiling water. Stir for about 5 minutes. Pour in milk and cream. Do not let it boil. Add vanilla and hot coffee. Mix well. Top with whipped cream and use a candy cane as a stirrer. Serve often for a Christmas spirit that lasts all year. Thank you for watching this Crystal Hill Assembly of God presentation of Rebecca Barfield's Christmas with a Twist. This live production and video production is copyrighted in 2019 by Crystal Hill Assembly of God and Rebecca Barfield. The story herein is based on the original ideas of Mrs. Rebecca Barfield. Any parallel stories or people are strictly coincidental and are not the fault of Mrs. Barfield. If you are in the Central Arkansas area we would like for you to join us at Crystal Hill Assembly of God in North Little Rock this Sunday or Wednesday night. 
We have something for every member of the family, from newborns to seasoned citizens and everyone in between. We have something specifically designed to minister to you. On Sunday mornings we start out with a time of pre-service prayer at 9.15 a.m., and at 9.30 a.m. we have Sunday school for all ages. We enter into worship at 10.30 a.m. with our Sunday morning worship service. We also have for children 4 through 12 kids city that runs concurrently to the morning service. At 1 p.m. our Latino congregation meets for an hour of pre-service prayer, and then at 2 p.m. our Latino congregation enters into worship with Centro Cristiano Hispano. On Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. our ladies spend an hour with each other and with God walking and talking in and around the church at our ladies walk and talk. On Tuesday mornings at 9.15 a.m. our ladies spend some time in prayer for the needs of our church, congregation, and our nation during our ladies' Tuesday prayer. Wednesday night is family night at Crystal Hill Assembly of God with something for everybody. On Wednesday night starting at 5.30 p.m. our church chef, Kenny Hepp prepares a delicious meal, which includes the entree, salad, drink, and dessert. Adults are $6, children ages 3 to 12 are $3, and children from 2 and under are free. Starting at 6.30 p.m. we have for the adults our Wednesday night uplift Bible study, for the youth we have the city youth, for both boys and girls we have junior Bible quiz, we also have girls ministries, and for the boys we have Royal Rangers. We have a fully staffed nursery with professional caretakers. Our nursery is open 30 minutes before each service and event and 30 minutes after each service and event, except for both the ladies' walk and talks, and the ladies' Tuesday morning prayer. The teachers and caretakers for our nursery, children, and youth are all subjected to rigorous background checks for your child's safety and your peace of mind. Our office hours which is Monday through Wednesdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our pastoral staff is here to serve you, our senior pastors are Rev. Terry and Janice Newman, our associate pastors are Rev. Jim and Alyssa Medley, our teaching pastor is Rev. Kenneth Mayo, our Spanish pastors are Rev. Greg and Sylvia Yaquez. You can visit our church at 6722 Mountain Pine Road in North Little Rock, Arkansas 72118, you can call us at 501 758 6541 5, 4, 1 during our office hours which again are Monday through Wednesdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can visit our website at crystalhill-ag.org or you can email us at crystalhillag at hotmail.com, and you can reach us on social media platform at at symbol crystalhillag. Mm. To the cross.